What's going on everybody and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cutters. Uh, we're going to start the episode today with a little road trip to the one, the only, CX Racing! We are back from CX Racing, and what did we buy? So as you guys can see, I bought a bigger intercooler, yes. Now I know many of you are probably wondering right now why in the hell would I even begin to even think about buying a bigger intercooler if this motor hasn't even ran yet. The motor's not even wired up, half of it is still missing. Well, to answer that question, lately I've been seeing a lot of KA turbos on Instagram and on Facebook and most of them are just forged bottom ends with stock heads and they're making upwards of 400 horsepower so when seeing that it got me thinking like what the hell is my KA going to be making you know when it's ready to run so you know this little intercooler that I already had you know it's, it's only rated for about 500 horsepower granted it is a v-mount setup so it might help push it up to you know about 550 but Overall, this little intercooler was never going to be able to handle the power that, you know, I'm anticipating that my motor is going to make. So the main question arises, how are we going to be fitting this bigger intercooler into the engine bay? Well, that's what this whole episode is actually about. So to start, the smaller intercooler and the radiator have only been mocked up in the engine bay up to this point. So those need to be removed first before we can get started. Next. The stock crash bar needs to come out as well as it will not be used anymore. A quick zap to the four bolts holding it in and it's ready to come out. So now that the front crash bar is off, there are two main reasons why this thing had to come off. There's a functional side of why it had to come off and there is a form side of why it had to come off. So obviously with the functional side as you can see, it's big gets in the way of all the airflow into the V-mount. So that's pretty straightforward. Now the form side of it is because I'm going to be converting the front bumper into an S13 front bumper. I want the show to match the go. So it's going to get a Sylvia front bumper. Which bumper? I have no idea yet. Off of which kit? I have no idea yet. But for sure stay tuned and I mean of course I'm going to be making a video on it. So. Yeah, stay tuned. Now, to kick this whole V-mount bracket off, we need to do some measuring. I put the thermostat housing back in so that the intercooler had something to rest on, and I wedged the top of the intercooler between the headlight mounts just to get a rough idea on how much room I have to work with in the engine bay. With it in, I measured the total distance between the headlight mounts. The measurement I get between the headlight mounts will be used to cut out the first piece of tubing. The material that I'm using to make this whole thing is 14 gauge half inch mild steel square tubing. So with that, I'll take the measurement that I got from between the headlight mounts and mark it on the tubing. Once it's marked, we'll take it to the bandsaw. We'll go back and check the fitment of the cut and it looks like it's all good. Next step, we'll take the intercooler to the bench and measure out the height of the intercooler and add an inch to it, just to accommodate the top bar that we just cut out as well as the bottom bar that we're going to cut out here in a minute. 
Essentially, we're going to be making a rectangular box that the intercooler will sit in, which is why we'll need that extra inch. These two pieces that we just cut will sit underneath the intercooler and will fit up the first piece that was cut so that they're all sitting flush. Next I'll take a piece of leftover tubing and make sure that the measurement I took left enough room for the bottom piece of tubing to still sit flush, which from the looks of it, it does. Now that i verified that the measurements are good, I'll turn the intercooler around so that the bottom is facing me and I'll measure out the last piece of tubing needed to finish off this rectangle. Same as with the other pieces, the measurement will get marked on the tubing and off to the bandsaw it goes. With all of these pieces cut out, this is what we're left with. All that's left to do now is to square everything up with the magnets and weld it all together. For the part that will be sitting between the headlights, I'll make sure that there's an equal amount of tubing on both sides so that the intercooler sits centered in the engine bay. Once it's all welded together, I'll test fit it to make sure that the rectangle doesn't bind on the intercooler as well as to make sure that it isn't warped. Judging by how it feels going on and how it sits, it's smooth and only warped ever so slightly. Now that that part is done, it's time to move on to the next part of this project. Now, if you're an S12 purist or a conservationist, then it's time to look away, because this thing is about to undergo some mad surgery. The lower radiator support, which also includes the tension rod bracket mounts, is about to get mutilated out of this car. Why? I'll explain that in a bit, but for now, just enjoy the light show. So here we are, cut out the stock uh, lower radiator support for the reason that as you can see here the radiator would come this way for the V-mount and now it can go all the way down here, boom. Now I didn't take video of me cutting out the tubing because I mean it's pretty simple, you know just measure between the frame rails and make your cuts. So yeah. This is where we're at now. In order to make the new tension rod bracket mounts, I cut out the nuts that were on the stock support and I fit them and welded them inside of the new square tubing that I'm using for this. All I had to do was drill holes to make sure that the bolts still went in. Since the replacement bar for the radiator support is now behind the tension rod bracket bolts, I bolted the tension rod brackets to the square tubing mounts and tacked them into place. With both mounts bolted in intact, it's time to fully weld them in. After letting the welds cool down to room temperature, it's time to weld the bottom side of the new tension rod bracket mounts. Now the reason I didn't weld the round tubing to the frame rails first was because I would have had to disassemble the entire suspension in order to get to the underside of the mounts. And with no tension rod brackets to bolt up to the new tension rod bracket mounts, there would have been a higher chance of the new tension rod bracket mounts to warp out of place, therefore for sure affecting the suspension geometry which obviously nobody wants. 
So speaking of warpage, even though I am welding the underside of these mounts on my bench, I didn't give them a chance to cool down much and I bolted them back up straight away. With the four bolts in and tight, I started welding the round tubing to the frame rails right away to minimize the warpage. It's also why I don't have footage of me welding the bar in, so yeah. Now that we have the new tension rod bracket mounts welded into place, it's time to make these mounts for the radiator part of the V-mount setup. For that, I'm using these quarter inch thick MP tube tabs that are slotted for inch and a half tubing that's usually used on sand rails or Baja bugs. To make sure that I kept the tabs straight and in the same position relative to each other, I made this crappy looking cheater bar that is the same width as the radiator. Now that the tabs are tacked into place, you already know though, weld time. So the next part would be to make the bracket that's going to be holding the radiator in place. We'll take the width and the height measurements of the radiator and boom, a magical bracket appears. So I have to apologize because I ended up going full sweat mode with this bracket since I was in a rush that day. Now that that's done, I welded two quarter 20 nuts to the open end of the bottom of the intercooler bracket to make it like a hinge. This will allow the V-mount bracket to have a wide range of positioning as well as being able to be disassembled if the engine ever needed to be removed or serviced. In order to mount this radiator to the bracket, some holes are going to need to be made. I'll take the radiator to the bench and lay the bracket on top of it to see where the pre-made holes on the radiator mounting fin land in relation to the bracket. Once again, I'll bust out the super accurate Harbor Freight calipers to measure out and scribe the locations where holes need to be made. Once scribed out, we'll take a trip to the drill press. Pre-made holes on the radiator mounting fins are too small for quarter inch bolts to go through, so I'll use a step drill to open them up to size. After test fitting some bolts, you can see that I'll need some washers to support the back side of the mounting fin. But even with two bolts snugged up, it's a very sturdy mount. Before anything else is done to the V-mount bracket as a whole, I'll test fit both the radiator and intercooler brackets together to make sure that there is no binding between the two and that they can be moved around without interference. After the mock-up going smoothly, the last two nuts that will serve as the upper mounting points for this whole thing are welded into place. So to mount the bracket, I chose a spot where a bolt hole already existed, which made my job a lot easier. It also placed the whole V-mount setup in a perfect spot. These holes are only used to mount a small piece of grill trim, so I mean nothing else will interfere with this whole setup, which I mean worked out perfectly. Now to make the mounting holes on the bottom, I'm going to use an 8th inch thick piece of sheet metal as a spacer in front of the ATI damper so that I can have a big visual reference as to how far back I can go without causing any interference with the pulley or any of the belts. With the top part of the bracket bolted in, I'm able to swing the whole thing back and mark my locations where the holes for the lower portion are going to be made. Once they're marked off, off to the drill press.
So at this point, every single hole that's needed to be made on the mount is done. It's time for a test fit to make sure that we're ready to move on to making the mounting tabs for both the radiator and the intercooler. Once I see that everything checks out, it's time to make the remaining mounting tabs for both the intercooler and the radiator. To save time, I went to my local Home Depot and bought all of this. Bonded ceiling washers to eliminate rattling from the radiator, some 6x1 bolts, and some L brackets that we're going to be cutting up and using as mounting tabs. As you guys can see, these L brackets are drilled for wood screws, so we'll have to open them up to about 8mm. Now it's not advisable to do with a step drill like I'm doing here. I ended up putting them all in the drill press to open them up to 8mm. Now that the intercooler tabs are all opened up to about 8mm, I'll bolt the brackets to the intercooler and mark them off flush to the bottom of the square tubing. Boom, a bit of camera magic and they're all cut up. I'll snug up the tabs and once again, it's weld time. From this angle, you can see that this side had a slight gap to it, so it needed to be filled in with a bit of weld. Now the other side not so much, so it was a bit easier to weld. And there we have it, the rectangle we made earlier now has all of the tabs needed to bolt the intercooler down solid. Moving on to the radiator, earlier in the video we took care of the holes on the mounting fins, so now it's time to make the upper mounting tabs. For these I'm going to use the two threaded 6mm mounting tabs that you'd normally use to mount the electric fans. All that's left to do is open up the holes on the brackets to 6mm and trim them accordingly. Once trimmed, they're welded into place and the radiator is 100% solid mounted. The ceiling washers have also been put into place on the bottom so that the mounting fin isn't bent by the nut and bolt. And here we are, the final test fit of the two-part V-mount bracket just to make sure that everything lines up, that nothing binds, or that nothing hits. The intercooler is now positioned in a way that will make everything else much easier to plumb in and mount in the engine bay. Everything checks out, and now there's one final thing left to do, and that is paint. The paint I'm using is Duplicolor Engine Enamel in new Ford Gray, just so that it matches the entire engine bay and it doesn't draw any attention to my crap welds. <laughs> So if you've made it this far into the video, I just wanted to say thank you and that I hope that I helped someone out with this rough example of a V-mount intercooler setup. So yeah, thank you and stay tuned because in the next episode I'm going to start organizing and plumbing the entire engine bay.
Once it's all organized and I like how everything sits, we'll finish off the V-mount with all of the required ducting. But for now, we'll end it here since this video has already carried on for a lot longer than I had already anticipated. And we've reached the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, then drop them down below. And uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in seeing any more progress on the S12, then feel free to subscribe. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.